With the Voice Over Match Daily Cast for today, Wednesday, July 10th, I'm Chris Lanning from NeighborhoodStage.com. All this week on Episode 4, the Voice Over Match podcast, I've been spending time with Josh Miles, Chief Creative Officer of Killer Visual Strategies. In today's clip, I asked Josh where Killer Visual Strategies finds their voice talent. We look really all over. It often depends just on the scope and budget for the project. For larger budget projects, we do work with some local talent agencies and you know really lean on them heavily to get us some great talent there. For quicker turn, lower budget projects, we'll you know use some of those online sites like Voices.com, you know things that are a bit more the budget sites. During our early days, we actually had a, a rolodex of local talent, young talent, primarily fresh out of some of the art schools in Seattle who we were working with them pretty much exclusively. We had like 10 artists that we would be sending demos to our clients of to really pick, you know, who really seems to fit this the best. It's funny, we actually had this one voiceover artist. Her name was Kayla. And I jokingly called her the voice of killer for like the first five years we were producing (laughs) videos because I swear she was in nine out of 10 videos we produced. So when you do an audition through one of the voiceover marketplace sites, I'm assuming you get somewhere between 60 and 70 responses, maybe on up over 100 auditions. So what does your process look like to sit down and go through all of that? It's definitely a a tedious process, but I think it's one that's really important that we spend our time digging into all the demos that are provided. And yeah, I mean, your estimate is pretty spot on. I would say a typical posting will get maybe 100 responses. We'll have some projects where maybe it's a series of like eight videos. So a bit higher budget than just you know, a single video. And that's where we'll find sometimes 200, 300 auditions. But I mean, we just go through every single demo. I listen to every single response and start just highlighting the ones that like, okay, this seems to really capture the essence of the brand that we're representing. This seems to really speak and sound like them. And from there, you know, we create a short list. Maybe we have 10 or 20 real standouts and then we'll keep digging into those and trying to, I'd like to get it down to a maximum of like eight or so and have a pretty good representation if if there isn't any initial thinking of, you know, this needs to be a woman, needs to be male, needs to be whatever age. It's a pretty blank canvas, open slate. We'll try to give a pretty good balance of youthful male, adult male, youthful female, adult female. And then from there, probably pick what we think are the two that best represent the brand and best will be able to capture the story. And then loop in the client and say, hey, here's the short list of candidates. Include all the demos for you to take a listen through to. Sometimes I'll tell them who my recommendations are. Sometimes I'll hold off and wait to hear their reactions. So I'm not giving them too much guidance because I kind of want to get what their gut reaction is as well. And then from there, it's pretty usually after that, we're able to settle on one artist. It's pretty rare that we would have to go back and recomb through those auditions or put out a new listing. Still to come this week on the VoiceOver Match Daily Cast. We'll find out some of the red flags that have jumped out at Killer Visual Strategies when going through auditions. And we also find out whether or not they reach back to talent that they like who have glaring technical errors in their auditions. Don't forget, you can listen to the VoiceOver Match podcast in its entirety. Just head over to voiceovermatch.com and find out all the ways you can listen and subscribe. With your VoiceOver Match daily cast for today, I'm Chris Lanning from NeighborhoodStage.com. Have a great day.